Hi everyone and welcome back to Ladies of Lavender. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and like to join the Ladies of Lavender family. Hey guys, I paused this video to hop on and say that I'm completely aware that I look very washed out in the first few clips and I just wanted to say that it doesn't get much better. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try to fiddle with the levels on my camera to try to make it better next time. I'm really sorry if it bothers you. Again, it doesn't get much better, but hopefully it'll be better in the future. All right, let's get back to the video. Um, I don't know if you can tell or if there's any difference at all, but I did get a camera and so this is now a camera instead of a f iPhone filming me. It will be a work in progress until I get everything finalized, but anyway, I have a camera. For today's video, we are going to talk about TSS. So first let's get into like what actually is TSS. So TSS stands for Toxic Shock Syndrome, and Toxic Shock Syndrome is actually a very deadly and very serious infection. And that infection is caused by two different types of bacteria, the first one being strep and the second one being staph. And I know this all sounds really scary, but we're going to break it down and explain it so you have really nothing to worry about. But before we get into the symptoms, how it works, stuff like that, let's get into the history of TSS. So toxic shock syndrome really became um, not popular, but like famous in the late 70s, early 80s when tampons were really starting to become more popular and more highly manufactured. So originally toxic shock syndrome, like I said, was linked to super absorbent tampons. And these are the tampons that came out in the late 70s, early 80s. So we did a video on the history of the tampon. Um, a long time ago and I would definitely recommend you go watch that after you watch this video because we do go through TSS linked to tampons in that video. Because of the TSS outbreak, a lot of research was done on tampons and that led to producing better tampons and producing better habits of using them, such as like changing the tampons often, having different sizes of tampons, stuff like that. Because of the research and the new habits and then the new uh, tampons that were manufactured, the numbers of TSS dropped substantially from where it was and all of the designs that were associated with toxic shock syndrome are also taken off the market. So let's get into some quick facts. Like I said in the beginning of the video, toxic shock syndrome is very deadly but only one in 100,000 people will experience TSS in the United States every year. Something that a lot of people don't know is that you can get toxic shock syndrome from using menstrual cups, so it's not just tampons. So what are the symptoms? So the symptoms of TSS are high fever, drop in blood pressure, which can cause you to be lightheaded or faint, uh, diarrhea, vomiting, sunburn like rash, muscle aches, and peeing less than usual. You can also get bloodshot eyes and r unusual redness under the eyelids, um, inside the mouth, or inside the vagina for some women. So how do you prevent TSS? Like I said in the beginning, a lot of research was done on tampons and how to use them, so we now know of a lot of really safe and healthy practices to help prevent TSS. One of those, and the easiest way to prevent TSS, is by washing your hands. And you need to wash your hands before you insert a tampon or a menstrual cup and before you take it out. Before and after, always wash your hands. One website said to go as far as not using tampons, and I think that's a little extreme, but if you do feel uncomfortable using tampons, you don't have to. But I do think that that's a little extreme. I would suggest alternating them with pads or some kind of other period product. I would suggest using pads when you have a lighter flow, and then switching to tampons when your flow is heavier. And this is also a really important thing. When you decide to choose um, a certain size of tampon, make sure that it's the lowest absorbency possible for you. 
meaning that it's like just enough absorbency where you don't leak. You just want to make sure that you're not keeping a dry piece of cotton inside your body for um, eight hours. It's just not good for your body. And you also want to make sure you're changing your tampons regularly. If you look at your tampon box, it'll tell you how long you can leave a tampon in. And if you're not seeing that on the box or you threw it away, you can check online and see how long you can leave a certain brand of tampon in. I think the universal time is about 8 hours and for menstrual cups I'm pretty sure it's about 12 hours but I might be wrong on some brands. So if you have trouble remembering how long you've left your tampon in then I would suggest setting a timer on your phone. It's really easy to do. It helps to remind you that you need to take your tampon out. And another thing that you can do that I would really recommend is talking to your parents about how you use tampons, what your routine is, uh, how you do it, all of that. I'm not telling you to necessarily explain in great detail how you insert a tampon to your parents, but like tell them that you wash your hands before and after, how long do you leave your tampon in, if you're using a menstrual cup, are you cleaning it regularly, are you keeping your tampons in a dry space, stuff like that. And for any parents who are watching these videos, by the way, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, but just make sure to talk to your child about their practices with tampons or menstrual cups. And make sure that they're following the instructions and advice given by healthcare professionals. Like make sure they're washing their hands, that they're um, taking out their tampons at a normal time. Just all of the stuff that I mentioned, just make sure that they're following through on that. And if they have any trouble or they start to experience any symptoms, make sure that you're already having that conversation with them. So if they do, for some reason, develop TSS, you already know what they're doing with tampons or menstrual cups, so you're already there a step ahead. So that's what I would suggest. Again, only 1 in 100,000 people ever experience TSS in the United States per year, which means it's very rare. but it's also a very serious infection. So please take this seriously. Please be responsible with menstrual cups and tampons. If you have any questions about today's video or any period related questions in general, please do not be afraid to reach out to us. Our email is ladiesoflavender20 at gmail.com. You could also DM us on Instagram at ladiesoflavender or you could leave a comment down below. And if any of you have a question but you don't really want to reach out to us, please direct them towards your parents. Your parents are there to help you. So all of the sources that I got my information from are listed down below. So please go check them out if you want to learn anything else. If you're interested um, and you want to learn some more, please go check them out. I really encourage you to. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Ladies of Lavender. We post every week to give you guys a heads up on what video we are posting for the week. But we also do donations every other month. So we'll give you guys updates on when we have donations, what we're doing, where we've donated, stuff like that. And our one year anniversary of Ladies of Lavender is coming up in February, February 10th to be exact, and we're planning something really special, so please go follow us so you're part of that because we really want you to be part of it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!